Hi and welcome to Orbit. This is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V and there's no Ultra in its name but it is definitely Ultra and quite unique. Sony has always played by its own rules. The design of the Xperia 1 Mark V is striking, elegant and also robust. The aluminium frame is ripped which makes it grippy and resistant. Gorilla Glass Victus 2 is used on the front and back and even stronger than the glass on other smartphones. The back isn't just matte, it's slightly textured. Honestly, it doesn't feel like glass, it feels kind of military and I can't help but think and don't ask me why it feels like a suitcase. While most most manufacturers try to make the camera as flashy and big as possible, Sony goes directly in the other direction. The free lenses protrude only a little and are encased in metal which should protect them well in a case of a drop. And because I'm such a pro smartphone reviewer, I dropped this phone on the first day of using it and you can't really tell because there are only two super small scuffs. The device is also well protected against water, 1.5 meters depth for 30 minutes. Nonetheless, there's still a headphone jack on the top. Sony is not only the last manufacturer to have such a port, it is also great in terms of quality. Sony takes audio really seriously. DSEE Ultimate improves the sound quality through artificial intelligence through AI by restoring compressed audio signals. And the front stereo speakers have also been improved. 40% more bass, says Sony, and I say the sound image is one of the best I know, it could just be a bit louder overall. The Xperia 1 Mark V is unusually slim and quite long, which is related to the display format. 21 by 9, which is the format of movies and this video. And Sony uses it because you can see more of chats, mails or websites at a glance. The slim shape also ensures that you can type comfortably on the keyboard with only one hand despite the 6.5 inch size. There is no notch, no hole or no curve on the Xperia 1 Mark V, but two symmetrical bezels at the top and bottom. Of course this looks a bit dated at first, but I did not mind it after a short period of time. However, the display looks super good. It has OLED, 120Hz, around 1000 nits of brightness and a 4K resolution. That's four times more than a Galaxy S23. We are talking about 643 pixels per inch. You can't even recognize individual pixels with a magnifying glass. LTPO tech is missing. That means no matter what is displayed, the display refresh rate is always 120Hz. Visually, that is not a disadvantage, but on the power consumption side, it is, but you will see shortly why that is hardly an issue. Inside, there's a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 supported by 12GB of RAM and at least 256GB of storage. Storage that can be expanded with microSD. That's something that hardly exists nowadays. And the performance of the Xperia 1 Mark V is just as good as you would hope. Apps open instantly, animations are always displayed smoothly at 120Hz, although the GPU has to move four times as many pixels as elsewhere. This might be due to the software. It's almost pure Android. I find the looks are beautiful and the navigation is intuitive. Sony has developed some additional features and apps. The Bravia Core includes 5 free Sony movies and 12 months of streaming in market leading quality. Or you can use the Xperia 1 Mark V as a viewfinder for your real Sony camera. And there are the Photo and Video Pro apps and I will talk about them more in just a bit. I could not find an official statement from Sony and therefore I assume that they will continue to provide two years of Android and three years of security updates. That is nowadays, especially for the price, definitely too little. And talking about updates, one or two would be desired even now because I have repeatedly experienced some bugs in form of crashes or frame drops. It is not related but still a shame that the Xperia 1 Mark V gets warm quite quickly and throttles down after 20 minutes of stress testing to 45% of its starting performance. At least the display and the camera did not have heat issues like on the predecessor. And the predecessor did not have a great battery life. But thanks to the 40% better efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, that is definitely different now. I was outside all day long shooting photos and videos and it got me through the day easily. The next day I had six hours of screen on time and still 20% of battery left and last day I had 80% left 
after work and that is super impressive and way 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 better than the predecessor. I consider 8 hours of screen on time to be absolutely realistic and that is enough to last 2 days and completely on par with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, iPhone 14 Pro, Moto Edge 40 Pro and Honor Magic 5 Pro. Basically there is nothing included in the box, not even a cable, just the phone in a recycled cardboard box. However you can use a 30 watt power adapter and it takes 30 minutes to charge up to 50%. A Motorola or Xiaomi device charge fully in only 20 minutes. Sony promises that their battery is extremely long lasting and will still have 80% of its capacity in 3 years. It usually takes 2 years to be at 80%. Wireless charging is available and reversed wireless charging as well. Sony is the manufacturer of almost every smartphone camera sensor and in the Xperia 1 Mark V there is the newest tech of sensor included. It's a stacked CMOS sensor with two layer transistor technology. It's 52 megapixel, 1 to 1.3 inch in size. It has an unusual aspect ratio of 4.3 to 3, which means that photos are effectively 48 megapixels and the extra area can be used for image stabilization. The advantage of that two layer transistors is that it can capture twice as much light and three times the saturation. And I noticed that the improvement immediately. The images are incredibly low noise and sharp, but not artificially sharp. They are naturally sharp. Colors and skin tones are also pleasantly natural. Sony used to be a bit shy about computational photography and the resulting dynamic range. That's better now, but I still see room for improvement. The night mode has also been improved and now captures faster, brighter results, but it's not on par with the best of the best. In general, I found it very convenient that there is an extra camera button on the side. And you can control every setting manually in the Photo Pro app and the pictures look much more like a real camera than a smartphone because of it. And that is possible with all three lenses. The ultra wide angle is relatively but not extremely wide at 16 millimeters. It is unchanged from the predecessor and the quality is relatively similar to the main camera. Although it has autofocus, unfortunately there's no macro mode. That's why I personally use the telecamera for it, even though the close focus there is also not the best. Sony has developed a variable periscope lens which can freely switch between between 85 and 125 millimeters, 3.5x and 2.5x. And it is pretty remarkable from a technical standpoint. The photos themselves are good, but nothing more. Maybe it's the rather small sensor or the variable lens, but the contrast and colors are very pale. The 2.5x looks like a digital crop. The lens is not that sharp. In general, I think the magnification should have gone further from 3x to 10x would have been awesome. Unfortunately, I have to say that I think that a good 3x or 5x camera would have achieved better images than the variable solution, even though I think that it is technically impressive. Filming with no other smartphone is as similar to a real big camera. I shot a commercial for my own coffee with the Xperia 1 Mark IV and was impressed with the video quality. But also the regular video mode looks great, super natural and the stabilization is great. Conclusion. You probably guessed it already and it's true. The Xperia 1 Mark V is expensive. It costs 1400 euros but yeah, it has every feature in the book. There is the 4K HDR screen, the premium design, it has an excellent battery life and main camera and even micro SD and the headphone jack, which are quite unique and rare nowadays. But this is not my new main phone because the ultra wide angle and the tele camera, they lack in my opinion. And I think Sony should improve them too. But nonetheless, this is a really great phone.